Good evening, Huyenant, Bueno Noches. One Shanghao, Bonsoir, Konbanwa, Guten Abend. I think that's all the languages of our church. Welcome to our epic St. Matthew's Church on the Corso Christmas Carols. My name is Sazon, and I'm one of the women's ministers on staff here at St. Matthew's Anglican Church in Manly on the beautiful northern beaches of Sydney. Now, just a week ago, like literally a week ago today, we had our staff end of year Christmas lunch and our senior minister Bruce gave a short speech giving thanks for the fact that we all made it through 2020 intact, healthy and happy on the staff team. And we kind of reflected on how excited we were to be together with all of you in our building on Christmas Eve services and then on Christmas Day. And look what's happened, a mere week. I'm still dumbfounded that I'm so shocked when things change overnight like that. And it took me back to the panic and fear that I felt back in March. And you know what I did? Back in March, and even now, I go to the Bible. I have to literally read verses of scripture over myself, over my family, over the world, over the world, just to cling on to the promises of our God. Verses like, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble from Psalm 46. Or do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. That's from Philippians 4. Or from Revelation 1, then he placed his right hand on me and said, do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. Jesus was always saying to his disciples, fear not. And that's what I want to say to you tonight. Fear not our wonderful counselor, our mighty God, our everlasting father and the Prince of Peace has always been and will always be 100% in control. So for the next hour or so, let's just block out this mad world and everything all around us and focus on and experience the hope that we have in our beautiful Jesus Christ. The reason we celebrate Christmas, 2000 years ago, God with skin on, came to be with us, walk alongside us, and ultimately die for our sins. We want to worship him, and we want to praise him tonight. We're going to be praying. We're going to be hearing from the word. We're going to be singing, and we're going to be singing some more. So let's get it started, hey? I'm just going to open for us in some prayer. Dear God, thank you for the hope we have in Jesus. Even though Christmas lunches we know it is cancelled, we know that hope is not cancelled. Bless this time we have together. And all God's people say, Amen.
hands. Woo. We're going to declare the King of Kings. He's the Lord of Lords. His mighty God. His Prince of Peace. Join with me as I have our first Bible reading from Micah 5. Marshal your troops now, city of troops, for a siege is laid against us. They will strike Israel's ruler on the cheek with a rod. But you, Bethlehem, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. Therefore Israel will be abandoned until the time when she who is in labor bears a son, and the rest of his brothers return to join the Israelites. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they will live securely, for then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth, and he will be our peace.
heart in love divine Star and angels gave the sign I'm now going to read two Bible readings first, back to back, both from Matthew, both beautiful. So won't you follow along with me as we first turn to Matthew 1, from verse 18. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Now because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law, 
and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace. He had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took pl place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate the marriage until she gave birth to a son. And he gave him the name Jesus. Now we'll turn to Matthew 2. And I'm going to be reading from verse 1 to 12. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose. And have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet was, has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For you, out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way. And the star they had seen, when it rose, went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary. And they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route.
Well, hi there. My name's Scott. I'm one of the ministers from St. Matthew's Manly. Really glad to be with you tonight. And as Cezanne prayed at the start, the theme for tonight is hope is not cancelled. And hope is a real Christmassy sort of a thing. Peace, joy and hope are the three big ideas at Christmas. But nothing is as hopeful as the little girl who wants a pony for Christmas. Ponies. They are expensive and you've got to have a lot of room and a lot of hope to even ask for one. If you live in an apartment, you've got no hope. You've got to cancel that dream. I heard the story of a little girl. She asked for a pony for Christmas and she couldn't believe it when uh, her uncle drove up to her house on Christmas Eve driving a horse float. Her eyes must have been popping out of her head as he lowered the ramp of the float and then wheeled out a brand new shiny BMX bike. In any other situation, that would have been a dream fulfilled, but for this little girl on this night, it was hope cancelled. Still, it wasn't as bad as another little girl I heard of who desperately wanted a pony. She even lived on a bit of land, so it just could happen. And she came down to the tree on Christmas morning to find a sign that says, your present is out in the paddock. So she ran out into the paddock to find a lonely pile of horse manure and another sign in the same handwriting which said it must have got away. What sort of parent goes to that length of trouble to dash their kids' dreams, to cancel their hopes? Now your hopes for this Christmas might be just as tentative no matter how modest they are. Uh, You might just want to sit down to lunch hoping that everyone gets on. Perhaps you're hoping uh, this Christmas there might be a chance of some kind of reconciliation, a uh, a mending of relationships, a patching up over differences. You've got to be careful that you don't get your hopes up too high. Perhaps now all you really want is just to be able to get everyone together, and that's it. This last week has shown us how quickly things can change after it really felt like we'd turned a corner, at least in our part of Australia. Well, whatever the case Hope is a distinctly, distinctly Christmassy kind of thing. But I wonder if you knew that hope has always been a distinctively Christmassy kind of thing. In fact, even before Christmas began. And I wonder if you further knew that hope has often been in danger of being cancelled. It's not just this year when a pandemic threatens to cancel hope right across the world, even though in our country we've been spared the brunt of it. But in our first reading from the Old Testament book called Micah, we heard of a whole nation, the the Old Testament people of God called Israel, who were under the threat from a foreign invader. They were under siege from a foreign enemy. The siege rams were built and laid against their city, and it's hopeless when that happens. But then there's just a faint whisper that all hope is not lost that from the little town of Bethlehem would come one who would rule over the land, one with old origins, perhaps even an eternal lineage. And he would shepherd the flock of God's people in strength and in majesty until the people live securely, until the people are at peace in him. What a heartening hope for people under siege. But still they're under siege, aren't they? So that hope looks remote maybe even like it's going to be snuffed out. And if you track the history of the Old Testament people of God, it would have felt like that hope was remote and distant and in real danger of being scrapped. The book of Micah that we read from was written in a time when the Assyrian Empire was the invader of the day, but, but after barely surviving the Assyrian assault... Uh, The people of God were later oppressed by the Babylonian Empire and then the Persian Empire and then the Greeks came along before the Romans were the overlords of the day when in the New Testament book of Matthew written some 700 years later a man called Joseph was engaged to a young woman really still a girl, probably a teenager and she was found to be pregnant with a child who was not his own. We usually think uh, of pregnancy as a time of great hope and anticipation, but this pregnancy was a problem for Joseph. It, it brought shame upon him and potential disgrace upon Mary, the teenage girl uh, he was pledged to marry. And he didn't know that the child she carried was from the Holy Spirit and not from another guy, and, and he had no clue that this baby would fulfill that ancient prophecy, that old whisper of a hope 
that one would come from the little town of Bethlehem to restore the fortunes of the people and bring them peace. But he was a decent sort of a fella, so he thought he would divorce Mary quietly in order to save her from public disgrace. But that would also cancel hope, wouldn't it? That would dash the dreams of his people. And so it was that an angel appeared to Joseph in a dream, giving him a heads up that it was all part of a bigger plan, a greater hope. So stay the course, Joe. This boy born of your virgin bride would represent God among us, a saviour of the people. Don't you cancel that hope. And we read that Joseph obeyed the commands of God via the angel, taking Mary home as his wife, and then naming the newborn son Jesus. I trust you don't dismiss the virgin birth and the talk of angels as mere fairy tales just because you haven't seen it in your own life. Uh, They are, by definition, miraculous and therefore extremely rare. Nevertheless, the next part of the reading uh, roots this story in real history, in time and space, in the reign of King Herod, the puppet governor of the land, in the city of Jerusalem where Herod lived, and in the small satellite town of Bethlehem. But it not only roots the Christmas story in real time and space, it presents a third and further threat to the hope that centers on this boy child from Bethlehem. There was firstly the threat of hundreds of years of foreign powers and oppressors and invaders of many kinds. Then there was the threat of Joseph's own uncertainty about his pregnant wife. But now thirdly, there is a more sinister threat from the puppet governor of the land, King Herod. Upon hearing that the Magi... Uh, What we commonly call the three wise men, they were probably astronomers and there may not have even been three of them. They had followed a star all the way from their home in the east because they were allowed to leave their local government area. And he was disturbed because they had described this baby as the king of the Jews. Surely he thought to himself, if anyone would be referred to as the king of the Jews, it ought to be him, King Herod. It's got the word king right there in his name. And so Herod found out from the religious officials where this baby was to be born. And would you believe it? Lo and behold, they refer Herod to the words of our first reading from Micah chapter 5, written some 700 years earlier. And he sent the magi or the wise men to where the star rested over the place where the newborn child lay in Bethlehem. Herod had asked them for a speedy report of where the kid was in order to worship him. But they were wise men after all and they suspected that that meant kill him rather than worship him. And in any case, they were warned in a dream not to report back to Herod. And in any case, Herod basically set about a plan to slay all the baby boys of Jesus' vintage in Bethlehem. Now I've got three boys of my own and I can hardly Imagine that. But without doubt, Herod wanted to cancel hope by cancelling the boy himself. And yet the baby lives. Hope lives. It prevails. Three men uh, were at a bar, it's not a true story by the way, discussing the deep questions of life and uh, the question got around to what they would want their loved ones to say at their own funerals. So they gathered around their coffins The first fellow says, I hope they would say I was a good father and a good husband. The next says, I hope they would say I was not only successful but kind and generous too. The last one said, I hope they say, hey look, I think he's still moving. (laughs) Isn't it true that while there's still breath, there's still hope? While there's still life, hope prevails. And the last thing I want to say tonight is that the hope attached to, to this birth prevails today it has not been cancelled it lives on because the story of Jesus is not just stuck in the time and the space back then it's a story of hope that really prevails until today and the hint that is true is in the names that Joseph was instructed to give his son he is Jesus who will save his people from their sins they will call him Emmanuel which means God with us our readings Let us know that the story of Christmas is not just a story back then of a beautiful little baby born on a starry night among impeccably behaved animals. 
It's the story of an uncertain man guiding his teenage bride to an uncomfortable stable in an insignificant town with both an unusual visitation by strangers from the east and the murderous threats of the governor of the day. So let's not get too romantic about it. It's a story of hope, not because of the beauty of that singular moment, but because of its ongoing meaning for us today. This child born in Bethlehem, born under the ancient prophecy that he would not only come from a virgin but would grow up to shepherd his people, is living proof that God has not abandoned us. For he is flesh and blood proof that God has come among us. And he hasn't come to entertain us or enchant us or inspire us as much as he has come to save us. From what? From our despair? From our loneliness, our, our purposelessness, uh, all true, I guess. But ultimately, he saves us from ourselves and our mistakes, our errors, our shortcomings, the way we not only fail God, but fight him and his claim to rule in our lives. That's basically what it means when it talks about sin. I, I understand that we don't like to talk about sin, and it seems like an even quaint thing to mention in our day and age. And we think nobody's perfect We're hopeful that we're good enough. But the truth is, my friends, that if we were to stand in the presence of the perfection of God for just a second, we would know only too well how inadequate we are and that we have all turned away from him angrily and actively or politely and indifferently. At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. And it doesn't really matter what we call it. Now the birth of this baby is flesh and blood evidence that hope has not been cancelled because it shows us that God is for us enough that he entered our world in human form to be both with us and to save us. This baby grew up like all babies do. None of them stay babies forever. And so Jesus grew up uh, growing, living, breathing, learning to walk, learning to work until such time when as a grown man he was sacrificed for us executed on a Roman cross in our place for our sins, our shortcomings, our inadequacies, our turning away in order to bring us back to God and then triumphantly rising again from death, appearing to hundreds if not thousands of eyewitnesses as a matter of historical record, never to die again and carving hope into stone as it were so that the hope of salvation And the hope of God being with us and for us prevails for all time and is extended to every human being, including you and me here tonight, if we wish to receive it and take hold of it. Friends, we think the real hope for the world is a freely available vaccine that can handle every strain. Or perhaps just a nice lunch tomorrow where everyone behaves. But even pandemics come and go. And I can't predict what's going to happen tomorrow. But I would like to invite you to seriously consider Jesus, the saviour of, uh, of our sin, God with us this Christmas, that he might not just be the saviour, but be your saviour, and that you might turn back to him rather than turning away from him. Now, you could even consider him this very night, or perhaps tomorrow when you're lying on your bed having eaten too much, though you promised yourself you wouldn't. And uh, maybe you just pull out that Bible that's somewhere up on your shelf or you look it up online and you read one of the biographies of Jesus' life that we call the Gospels. Maybe you start with the Gospel of Mark. It's short and it is to the point. And you consider Jesus to be your saviour. Maybe you'd like to do that in January. And I invite you to come and join us uh, to church in January. We are on every Sunday. But consider him to be your saviour because hope can be a flighty thing whether we're talking about ponies for presents or the great many unspoken hopes that we all carry about at this time of year it doesn't take very much for them to get cancelled disappointed abandoned or remain unfulfilled but the birth of this baby is real hope my friends he will stand and shepherd his people And he will be their peace. Give him the name Jesus. He will save his people from their sins. Call him Emmanuel. It means God with us. Hope is not cancelled. 
It rests in Jesus and it prevails tonight. Amen.
What a great honor to worship our Lord Jesus through singing. It's now my honor to worship the Lord Jesus through praying together. So will you join with me wherever you are, however you find yourself, in whatever way you feel comfortable as I pray. Saviour, born in a stable, will you keep us trusting that great is he who runs the universe than anyone who we look to here on earth. Keep us safe in the knowledge that you will provide, that you will build your church, and that no purpose of yours can be thwarted. And remind us often, Lord, that we just flex in the wave of history that rolls on deep and wide and all for your glory. Alongside people from all over the world, we grieve the ongoing impact of the COVID pandemic. We weep with those who have lost family members and friends. And God, we pray for decision makers from government and health authorities, specifically at this time, for the Premier of New South Wales, Gladys Berejiklian, and the Chief Health Officer, Kerry Chant. We pray that they might continue to act sharply and justly and with great wisdom, and that those developing vaccines might be productive. We ask that you might help us to be patient as we deal with inconveniences and disrupted plans at this time of year. Almighty God, in these days of uncertainty, injustice, anger and fear, make us a people of hope and joy. Help us to get real perspective on the challenges of our lives, of our country, of the world, by magnifying above them your great name, so that we see reality in the sure and certain blazing light of your splendor. Give us the wisdom to understand the things we can do to make a difference, and give us the courage to get busy doing them. We pray for those who feel lonely or lost at Christmas, for those who are sick and downcast, for those who are estranged from families, and for those at the margins of our society. We thank you for those who give care and service on Christmas Day. Keep us so filled up with the spilling over life you freely give that we can't help but keep on spilling changing grace. Keep us counting the gifts, using the gifts, and being the gift. Almighty God, this gift of your Son is a living sign that you have not abandoned us. Fill us with this hope tonight. Because yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thanks. I am now going to move on to some announcements. Now, there's quite a few, so don't get overwhelmed. If you lose track of anything, you can always just go to our website. First off, the Kids Christmas Special is available now. If you've not watched it yet, please get on the website. It's on our YouTube channel and watch it together with your family. You can even share the link with family members overseas. It's just a, overseas. It's just a real joy. You'll love it. On the 25th, so tomorrow, we will be online. And the service will be available from 8 a.m. It's going to be more of a traditional service. Then on Sunday, the 27th of December... We will no longer have the combined live service that we have planned for that morning, nor will we have any online service that Sunday. So I think you might like to go to our YouTube channel, watch some services that you've maybe missed, anything like that. There's a, a nice log, big catalog that you can get into. On Sunday, the 3rd of January, we will resume online services at our usual service times, which are 8, 10, 5, and 6.30. But we will not meet in the building. Our online services can also be accessed by the St. Matthew's Manly website. On Sunday, the 10th of January, we will have online services at our usual service times. And we do hold hope out that we might be meeting back in the building by then, depending on what the government and health advice is at the time. Now, we, we, we will keep you updated. So probably best advice is to keep an eye on your emails. Visit the website if you need to. Everything will be communicated on the, uh, over there. If you need to find anything out about St. Matthew's, if you want to reach out to anyone, if you want to communicate with us, please use our online connect card that's also available on our website, and we will endeavor to get back to you. And now it is my great pleasure to close off this beautiful service. We are incredibly happy that you've tuned in, and I hope you've been reminded that hope will never, can never be canceled. This will be a memorable Christmas, that's for sure. But we're really looking forward to seeing you again in person. 
I just want to close with these words from a hymn that was written back in 1918 and that I've, I've just clung to in these uncertain times. It goes like this. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his beautiful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Merry Christmas. We love you.